Planeswalkers, the faces of Magic the Gathering and Bane of its constructed balance. We all know on a surface level these cards represent the main characters of the story, but what the fuck is their whole deal? Sure, we all know Tabalt is a scary devil lad, but why is he a scary devil lad? Well, why don't we take a look at all 53 unique Planeswalker characters and find out. This is what's the deal with every single Planeswalker in 25 minutes. Starting right at the top with Ajani. Ajani is a Leonin from the plane of Naya. He ascended when his brother was murdered because of cat racism. He's one of the only people to ever fight Nicol Bolas and win. Ajani is besties with Elspeth and he helped her many times, most notably on her quest on Theros. After she was murdered, he got really sad and began his quest for vengeance. He was hunting Tezzeret on Kaladesh where he joined the Gatewatch and now he's a pretty chill dude who plays exclusively support and tends to his garden. Watley is from Ixalan where she is the warrior poet of the Sun Empire. She's good at fighting, she's good at poetry. Her spark ignited during a battle with Angrath, but was immediately pulled back to Ixalan by the Immortal Sun. Once the Immortal Sun was taken away, she planeswalked to Kaladesh where she became friends with Sahili Rai. Sahili Rai is a lady from Kaladesh who can transmute metal. She was in the room when Rashmi invented planar bridge technology by accident and didn't do anything to stop it, despite knowing exactly how dangerous it was. Angrath is a minotaur metal bender of unknown origin, despite looking really scary, being aligned with black and red mana, and even having a card where he literally has the bad guy mechanic, Angrath is not a bad guy. He's actually a super cool dude who really just wants to go home and see his two daughters. He loves bringing his daughter's presents from the other planes, but he got trapped on Ixalan for 14 years due to the Immortal Sun. Basri Ket is a paladin slash sandbender from Amon Ket devoted to the god Oketra. When he completed the Trial of Solidarity, the moment of pure elation caused his spark to ignite. When he eventually learned to planeswalk on purpose, he eagerly returned to Amon Ket only to find the entire place a smoking crater. Chandra Nalar is a red fire mage that no one can seem to agree on what she looks like. Chandra was born on Kaladesh, where being a pyromancer is really illegal. Her spark ignited after almost being executed for the crime of being born with this magic. She learned to control her pyromancy on Ragatha at a monastery called Carol Keep, and after the whole Dragon Scroll debacle, she joined the Gatewatch, reunited with her mom, and was a general mess of emotions and fire who mostly solves problems by being sad and exploding. Sarkhan Vol is from Tarkir, and he ascended after being touched by a dragon spirit. Sarkhan just really loves dragons, which is why he joined Bolas. When he saw a Johnny kick Bolas's ass, he went a little bit crazy because he just couldn't wrap his head around a dragon losing to a cat. He did some shit with Bolas and Zendikar and all that nonsense, but afterwards he saved Ujin's life on Tarkir and then really worked on his own mental health, and now he's doing much better. Gideon Jura was an indestructible orphan boy from Theros. His real name is actually Kithian, and he ran a gang on Theros, but like a cool Robin Hood type of gang of other orphans, not like a scary gang. Kithian did end up in prison, where he was trained by Hyksus in the art of hieromancy and given his signature Cyril. In a moment of pure hubris, he attacked the god of death, which resulted in all of his friends dying. This trauma caused him to ascend and end up on Bant, where they couldn't pronounce his name, so they started calling him Gideon. He did a bunch of cool hero shit all over the multiverse with the Gatewatch and then died saving Liliana's ass, which really solidified the whole basically MTG Jesus narrative. Jace Balaran was born on the plane of Vryn. His parents put him up for adoption at a young age because they feared his telepathy. He was adopted by the Sphinx Alhamra and taught to master his mental magic. Jace's abilities progressed until eventually he was able to read his teacher's mind. Doing so, he discovered his own nature as a planeswalker. His spark had ignited a long time ago, but Alhamra had been repeatedly wiping his memory of the event. Jace challenged his teacher, and in a battle of wits, both Alhamra and Jace had their minds ruined. Jace planeswalked to Ravnica with no memory of who he was. Then he was a bad dude for a long time, he worked for Tezzeret in the Infinite Consortium where he did some real criminal shit, but eventually managed to escape the gang with Liliana's help. After that, he was tricked by Bolas into the whole Dragon Scroll nonsense, but seems like he didn't really feel too bad about it because he immediately just left Zendikar and forgot about it entirely. Tired of being a bad guy, he runs a maze real good and becomes a politician. Politician. But he really sucks at being a politician because he's always leaving to go do other things that aren't his job. With Gideon's help, Jace completes his character arc and manages to become a good guy with the Gatewatch. He did lose his job to a lizard person eventually, which is only natural in politics. Fun fact, Jace only has nine toes. Tezzeret is a dude from Esper where having bionic limbs is super cool and fashionable. His backstory is basically if Poe from Kung Fu Panda read that the Dragon Scroll was blank and then just 
popped out of existence. He planeswalks right into Bolas's lap on Grixis and becomes his lackey. He runs the infinite consortium for him, but eventually leads a violent coup and takes it for himself. Balerin then kicks the shit out of him, but Bolas brings him back to life with some more super fashionable bionics. After that, his job mostly just consists of holding doors open for Bolas and screaming. Vraska's spark ignited after she was a victim of police brutality. She became a real good assassin on Ravnica, and she liked to kill people in a way that was thematic to how they lived their life. She tried to get Jace onto her side by killing a bunch of people whose names spelled out his name, but it turns out boys don't really go for that kind of thing. Later, Bolas offered to make her head of the Golgari if she simply followed his magic compass. This leads to a bunch of character development with Jace, and she flip-flops between being a good guy and being a bad guy before eventually landing on good guy only after the bad guy has been defeated. It's time for a lightning round! Some walkers don't have a lot of lore, so let's just get them out of the way. Aminato is an eight-year-old girl who can see and change destiny at will. Aminato foresaw that one day she would become a planeswalker, so she decided to simply ascend now and get it over with. She uses her moss to nudge the destiny of others in the direction that she pleases. Arlen Cord is a werewolf from Innistrad who I think looks a lot like Sigourney Weaver. She was a church girl, but then like most church girls, had a bit of a falling out when they found out she was a werewolf. The Wanderer has to constantly focus on not planeswalking, and if she ever loses focus, like when she sleeps, she will unwillingly and constantly planeswalk away. She also has the Black Panther Force redirect move, and they were on Akoria just long enough to fuck up this one monster. Nickel Bolas, look I did a whole video about this dude, just go watch that one. Ujin! If I get one more comment telling me that it's pronounced Ujin or Ugin, I'm gonna fucking lose it. All right. I just want to grill for God's sake. Estrid the Masked. Don't know much. Probably never will. She uses her masks to swap in new abilities. Jiang Yangu woke up one day on the plain of mountains and seas with no memory of who he was. He has a magic dog named Mo Wu who can change size and turn to stone, which means he can take him with him when he planeswalks. Mu Yangling was wandering around the countryside with her mentor Li Shan when Li literally just has an aneurysm and drops dead. Struck with grief, Mu goes to the Ten Wizards Mountain to try and find an answer and maybe do a little bit of time magic to undo the tragedy, and that's where she meets and becomes friends with Jang. Kazmina, she can turn people into frogs? I'm guessing she's from the wizard school set coming next year. Hi, pause the video. Sorry, I know this is supposed to be the lightning round segment, but, you know, as I was producing this video, the War of the Spark art book came out, and probably nothing, but let me just go through it and make sure there isn't any new lore. Like, why would there be new lore in an art book? That doesn't make any sense. God damn it. Okay, so apparently Kazmita is the leader of the fucking Planeswalker Illuminati, and they just weren't gonna tell us? She's preparing for a major conflict that's gonna dwarf the entire War of the Spark, and you're telling us for the first time in the art book? Nahiri, again, just gotta go watch my other video for this one, and also look for a video about Zendikar 3 that is coming soon. Tabalt is just a psychopath, he likes torturing people and small animals, and it's like, we get it. You're a sadist, you don't have to make it your whole personality. His spark ignited when the cops kicked his door in and he did a spell that turned him into a devil. Ren is a dryad who can bind herself to tree people, and she doesn't name the plant dudes that she takes over, so she just numbers them. This one is her sixth, so its name is Six. Soren Markov's grandpappy, Edgar Markov, was trying to find a solution to the famine sweeping Innistrad, so he performed a demonic ritual, drinking the blood of an archangel which transformed him into the plane's first vampires, which technically did solve the famine problem. Edgar passed the curse to Sorin, and the trauma of the conversion caused Sorin to ascend. After the first encounter with the Eldrazi, Sorin created the Helval and the Archangel Avacyn to protect his plane when he was away. Nyssa is an elf from the Jiraga tribe on Zendikar, her spark ignited when she uncovered the resting Eldrazi and got spooked real bad. She arrived on Lorwyn, where she hung out with a bunch of literal racists before turning back to Zendikar. She teamed up with Sorin to stop the Eldrazi, but then just completely fucked everything up. She joined the Gatewatch and tried to get it on with Chandra, but both of them were way too socially incompetent to get anywhere, and then Greg messed it up. Doretti is a goblin from Fiora, and unlike many goblins, Doretti is extremely smart and he's talented at artifice, but unfortunately, like many goblins, he is a victim of blatant racism. After his co-workers pulled a really funny prank on him, him, one of his inventions exploded, which nearly killed him, causing his planeswalker spark to ignite and leaving him without the use of his legs. He built himself a super cool mobility device and started a goblin revolution with Grenzo. Davriel Kane is one of my favorite characters personally. You should go read Children of the Nameless if you haven't yet. You can still find a PDF of it pretty easily. He is a talented diabolist who has the ability to steal spells out of people's minds and use them for himself. He's also very skilled at making demonic contracts and binds many demons to him at once with contracts he won't 
don't fulfill. Voluptra, for example, is canonically the sexiest succubus on Astrod and will get his soul if they ever bone down, but unluckily for her, Davriel either seems to have a will of steel or be asexual, so he has no intention of ever hitting it, binding her to his service as an accountant forever. I don't really know what the deal with the Darth Vader looking card in war is, don't ask me. Domri was a young orphan boy on the streets of Ravnica. His planeswalker spark ignited when he went under the gruel rite of passage of being buried alive, which sent him to Naya. He later returned to Ravnica and with the help of a mysterious benefactor was able to overthrow Borberigmos as guild leader. During the War of the Spark, Domri was fighting Eternals until he saw the God Eternals destroy V2 Ghazi and he decided he wanted to be on the side with the super zombies instead. He was an Anarch of Bolas for about 15 seconds before Bolas started the Elder Spell and Darmory was the first victim. Dovin Bon is a Vidalkin from Kaladesh who possesses the ability to see flaws in anything. He was doing some solo plotting on Kaladesh, but he got involved with the bad guys during the revolution. During the war, he got beat up by Lazav real bad, who was pretending to be Chandra, and after the war, he was assassinated by Demir for realsies. Kiora is a merfolk from Zendikar. She ascended when she was swallowed whole by a Leviathan. When the Eldrazi were unleashed on her home plane, she ran to other planes, hoping to collect power and sea creatures strong enough to fight them. Kiora is honestly just kind of the worst. She might be the only planeswalker who is more of a stupid piece of shit than Nyssa. She just messes with other people who are actually trying to help. Like, for example, when she showed up on Theros, she summoned a tidal wave and destroyed a major city, killing untold thousands of innocent people because she wanted to get the attention of some local sea creatures. Then, she just wastes Elspeth and Ajani's time for basically no reason. She stole Thassa's Bident before heading back to Zendikar to battle the Eldrazi, where she was just utterly useless and at times actively detrimental to beating the Eldrazi. She didn't do anything of import during the War of the Spark either, she just sucks. Elspeth Tyrrell has been through a lot. She was born in a Phyrexian torture chamber and ascended from the stress of that scenario at a very young age. She spent her adolescence on Bant, where she trained as a knight and became friends with a Johnny. During the confluence, Bant was forced to defend itself as the other planes began to overlap and invade, and realizing the war was unwinnable, she ran away. She got caught up in another losing war though, where she joined Koth in fighting the Phyrexians on Meriden. That didn't go well either, and she was forced to escape to Theros. Theros' video is coming soon, so just watch out for that once I finish reading Godsend, but basically she works for Heliod and then Heliod kills her. But she doesn't stay dead. And hey, quick side tangent, Elspeth should have really stayed dead, alright? I will die on this hill, and my argument basically boils down to the fact that I really like one piece of writing from 2016. One of the best pieces of fiction Wansi ever put out was a story titled Release, and I'll put the link in the description, I highly recommend that you go read it, but this story is one of the most intelligent and emotionally resonant pieces that was ever written for Magic Story, and it's unique from the typical pieces of fiction in that it just takes a second of introspection and takes a moment to think about how the characters fit into the larger scale of the multiverse, and it does this by focusing in on a small character moment. The story cuts between a Johnny on Kaladesh where he's on a mission to save his friends, and more importantly, a flashback as he mourns the recent deceased Elspeth. And it's such a powerful character moment for a Johnny as he confronts the nature of planeswalkers and he's reminded about the power that having a spark holds because they can always leave. Rarely do planeswalkers ever see the effect they have on places they interfere with and how huge the consequences of their actions are. But you know what? None of that fucking matters because don't worry, Elspeth is alive again. Stop being sad, a Johnny. Don't even worry about it. Actions have consequences? Nah, baby, not for planeswalkers. What are you talking about? Get back on your feet and go snap some necks. By bringing her back, it just completely invalidates one of the best things they ever made, and they replaced it with a one-page story blurb with less than 10% of the word count. Elspeth should have really stayed dead. Xenagos was a hedonist who partied so hard his spark ignited. And in much the same way that drinking quickly loses its thrill, becoming a planeswalker makes normal partying pretty boring, so he turned to a much harder drug, attacking and dethroning God. Because of the way Theros works, Xenagos found out if enough people think you're a cool dude, you just become a god. So that's what he did, and that's what happened. This didn't last long though, because Elspeth showed up and killed his ass. Calyx is basically the Terminator. He was created by the god Clothis on Theros for the purpose of fighting and killing Elspeth after she escaped the underworld. Since Calyx's entire reason for being is to kill Sarah Connor, when she planeswalked off of Theros, he simply decided to follow her. Ashiok is a non-binary, scary-looking nightmare wizard who feeds on fear. Ashiok tried to put the entire plane of Theros to sleep and harvest some good good dream magic, but 
but Derek Faden stopped them before they could finish. Ashiok inadvertently helped Elspeth escape the underworld by giving her some really scary nightmares. Dak Faden is the self-proclaimed greatest thief in the multiverse, and he can cast Identify on magic items by touching them and can copy their enchantment for himself. He's originally from the plane of Fiora, where Dak was a typical gifted kid, which is to say he was good at first, but then one fuck-up caused his cascading notion of high expectations to lead him to a life of crime. Despite the whole greatest thief in the multiverse thing, he was caught stealing one time and had his arm permanently dyed red. During the War of the Spark, he misunderstood how rogue mechanics are supposed to work and died. Koth of the Hammer is a Volshock Geomancer from Mirrodin. When the Phyrexians began to invade, he recruited Elspeth and Venser to try and stop them. The three of them managed to rescue Karn from Mirrodin's core, but at great cost. When we last saw Koth, he was about to get killed, so he's probably dead. Venser is yet another orphan, but this dude's from Urborg. He died doing that thing I just mentioned with Koth. He's kind of hot, though. Speaking of Karn, it's time for yet another side segment. To grossly oversimplify, magic lore is broken into two parts, pre-mending and post-mending. Sometimes current magic story dips into pre-mending, like with Nahiri and Soren, but most pre-mending stuff is old, inaccessible, and in my honest opinion, pretty boring. So I'll be honest, I don't really know what these next few walkers whole deal is, and I really don't care. Karn is truly the saddest robot there ever was. He was made by Urza for the purpose of being a probe for their time travel experiments. He's made of silver because apparently that's the only material that can travel through time. Maybe someday I'll spend 20 minutes explaining the whole Weatherlight saga, but today is not that day. All you need to know is that Urza sucks some magic rocks in Karn's eyes, and that gave him his artificial planeswalker spark. Karn created the plane of Argentum, and then made the Mirari, and then got depressed and turned the Mirari into Memnark, and then Memnark turned Argentum into Mirrodin, and locked Karn out. Glissa killed Bemnark, and then Karn went to go close the time rifts, but he returned back to Mirrodin to go hibernate in the core. Unlucky for everyone, he forgot to wipe his shoes, and he tracked some Phyrexian goo onto the plane. Venser, Elspeth, and Koth found Karn, and Venser gave up his Planeswalker Spark to reboot him. Karn left New Phyrexia to go find the Silix, which is basically a nuke that was buried on Dominaria, but was interrupted by Chandra and Jaya so he could help them fight Nicol Bolas in the War of the Spark. But now he's back to doing the nuke thing. To actually explain Urza's whole deal would take an hour, but all you need to know is that he's the main protagonist of the pre-mending story, but he's actually the worst. Imagine a story where Hitler is the only person who can fight Satan. What I'm saying is that he's only really a protagonist by comparison. Free Lise is a half-elf from Dominaria and one of Urza's nine titans, meaning this Tinkerbell-looking lady is actually a Gundam pilot. She ascended when she was beaten up by a dude named Jason. Jaya was originally a side character and we all thought she was dead until it was revealed that she was Mother Lutri, the matriarch of Carol Keep on Ragatha and Chandra's old teacher. She's now teaching Chandra how to not suck so bad. Lord Windgrace was the Panther King of Urborg and another one of Urza's nine Gundam pilots. This dude hates artifacts. Sarah created the angels on Dominaria and then she made her own little pocket realm and filled it with people who really liked her until fucking Urza showed up and the Phyrexians followed him and destroyed the plane. Sarah was very sad about it until she got a boyfriend, a planeswalker named Faroz, but then he was killed and she was extra extra sad. So sad, in fact, that she forgot to heal herself after she got stabbed one time and died. Teferi was a student at the Talarian Academy when some Phyrexians showed up and killed him, but then Karn went back in time and unkilled him. One day, he was fucking around with some time magic, but he messed up real bad. Instead of dying, he ascended to a planeswalker. Later, the Phyrexians invade again, so Teferi decides to save his own country from the war war by phasing out all of Zalfir. This made a lot of people real mad because he didn't exactly ask permission first. He was going to phase it back in, but then he got his head chopped off by Bolas, and even though he got his head back, he fixed the time risk by giving up his own spark, and after the mending, he was no longer strong enough to phase Zalfir back in, so now it's just stuck like that forever. A couple thousand years later, and Jorah just kind of hands him his spark back, and I guess she just had it the whole time? So he joins the Gatewatch, and now he's helping Karn blow up the Phyrexians. Okay, back to Planeswalkers who were dumb for completely different reasons. Kaya is a ghost assassin, which is an assassin who kills ghosts, not a ghost who is an assassin, and they make that joke no less than three times in the War of the Spark trilogy. In Conspiracy 1, she killed Ghost King Brago, and then on Ravnica, she killed the Obsidat Ghost Council, but weird Ravnican lore made her the new head of the Orzov because of it. After the War the spark, Kaya was assigned to kill Liliana for her role in helping Bolas, but we'll come back to that with 
Liliana Vess. She was a noble's daughter on Dominaria, but when her brother fell sick, she went into the woods in search of a cure. She was tricked by the mysterious Raven Man into giving him a poultice, which turned Josu into a zombie. This drama ignited her spark, and she went to Innistrad, where she learned to master necromancy. After the mending, she brokered a contract with four demons in exchange for immortality and the power she'd lost in the mending. One of her four demons, Kothaped, sent her to collect the chain veil from Chandelar, and she did so, absentmindedly cursing Garrick on her way out. She used the chain veil's power to kill Kothaped instead of giving it back to him. On Innistrad, she killed demon number two, and then she held the gatewatch with Emrakul, and then she did the thing on Kaladesh, and then she did the thing on Amonkhet where she killed demon number three, and then she did the thing on Dominaria where she actually got some real and interesting character development. It was one of the best parts of the Gatewatch story in my opinion, but unfortunately, after killing Belzenlock, who was demon number four, Bolas revealed the fine print of her contract that once all four demonic contract holders are gone, the contract defaults to the one who brokered it, which was him. Bolas forced her to command the Dread Horde during the war, but she changes sides and uses the Elder spell against him and is saved by Gideon. In War of the Spark 2, Liliana runs away to Dominaria, but gets mind controlled by a genie. Yep, that's the actual plot. Thank you, Greg. Kaya, Teo, and Rat show up to assassinate her since she did kill a lot of people, but instead they decide to spare her and take the chain veil back as proof of death and give Liliana a new name and identity on Fiora as Anna Laura. Garrick Wildspeaker is an anarcho-primitivist who would love nothing more than to return to Monkey, at least until he was cursed by the Chain Veil, which caused him to go insane and slowly start turning into a demon. He hunted Liliana for revenge until that got kind of boring, so then he just started killing other planeswalkers for fun. At some point, Jace stabbed him with a rock in an attempt to suppress the curse of the Veil. On Eldraine, he was mind-controlled by Oko, but in a bit of writing which literally made me have to take a break from the book as I read it, Garrick trips and falls into the Black Cauldron, which instantly cures his curse. That's it! Yep. Oko is a shape-shifting fae on his home plane. He was tortured for being too good at being a fae, which caused his spark to ignite. On Eldraine, he ran into Garrick, and instead of letting himself get killed, Oko mind-controlled Garrick into being his slave, named Dog. Oko turns King Kenrith into an elk, and he was planning on having Kenrith get killed by the elves during their annual hunt, which would cause war to break out between the wilds and the humans. But Kenrith was rescued by his kids, and instead of letting the fun in there, Oko just fucking shoots Kenrith himself. But then, the stupid deus ex machina sword saves the king instead. Will and Rowan Kenrith. They suck. They are the merriest Sues, but they're also super racist. And hey Kate Elliott, being fantasy racist isn't the fun character trait you think it is? Like, having characters be prejudiced is an effective world building tool, I will concede that point. But it also makes your protagonists racists. Do you see what I'm kind of getting at here? So anyway, Will and Rowan spark ignited when they found out they were adopted. Luca is one of my favorites to talk about because if you never read the book, you might think this guy was the protagonist of Ikoria. No, not even a little bit. Luca is basically if How to Train Your Dragon, but instead of a lesson where they learn to live with one another, Hiccup just immediately uses Toothless to kill his entire family. Vivian Reed is from the plane of Scala, which was destroyed by Bolas, but not before they could craft a super duper god killing ultra weapon, the Arcbow. The things she kills with the Arcbow, she can then re summon to fight for her. As a big green ghost. Despite the arc bow being a weapon designed specifically to kill Nicol Bolas, she never once tries to kill Nicol Bolas with it. Narset is a savant who can learn new things after seeing it done only a few times. Her spark ignited when she learned the shocking truth about Tarkir's past before the Dragon Lords. Sometimes she hangs out with Tamio and she also lives on the spectrum. Obnixilis was a general on a war-torn plane, and in order to gain the upper hand in the war he was fighting, he asked some demons for help, sacrificing some soldiers in the process, almost like some kind of black oath. The demons responded by killing every living thing on the plane except him, and I guess that ignited his spark. He had the chain veil for a bit, which is why he turned into a demon, and here he stuck a rock in his forehead, which is why he lost his ability to planeswalk. 6,000 years later, during the whole, you know, Eldrazi nonsense, he siphoned power out of the Hedrons to get his spark back. Ralzarek. 
This homosexual is homoelectrical. He was groomed by Bolas at a very young age, and his spark ignited when he found out his boyfriend was cheating on him. He's the new head of the Is It after Niv became the new Living Guild Pact. Samet was a hashtag truther on Amonkhet before shit hit the fan, and then when shit hit the fan, I'm sure she was very validated. Her spark ignited when Hazret said thanks to her, which after Basri makes two planeswalkers who ascended just because one of the Amonkhet gods acknowledged them. You really gotta wonder how many times the trials of Amonkhet were completed and the person just evaporated. Tamiyo is a Soratami or Moonfolk from Kamigawa. Those weird things are her ears, by the way. She runs a story circle with her pals Ajani and Narset, and she's one of the only two planeswalkers on this list who has a family. She has a husband named Genku, three kids, a sibling, and she still visits her parents regularly. Parents are in very short supply among planeswalkers, if you hadn't noticed. Teo Varada is an orphan from Gobakan, where he was an acolyte of the Order of the Shield Mage. His spark ignited when the interplanar beacon was lit, and he kinda just followed it like a moth. No real moment of tragedy or strong emotions for this guy. Teacher was just doing roll call, and he said, Oh, I guess that means me, huh? He really just spends the two books being a placeholder for the reader, and I don't think anything would change if he wasn't there. And finally, you! In the meta-narrative of the game, you are a planeswalker. Don't look into that too deeply though, because it really quickly unravels the narrative if you think about it too hard, so just go with it.